This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by Audible. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the episode of Ask the Buffalo. Our mascot, Child of Buffalo, is out this week. So you got to deal with this guy's mug. I am John Rettinger. Up this week, we're going to talk about the Surface Pro 3, some iPhone 6 questions, our new office, Patreon, and YouTube tip jar questions, and whether or not charging your phone is really damaging your precious electronic baby. Baby. This is Ask the Buffalo. Let's start asking. <laughs> First question comes from Twitter. User at Will was watching asks at John Four Lakers, should I buy a Surface Pro 3 instead of a laptop? Listen, I love the Surface Pro 3. I gave it a raving review. I know some reviewers were kind of down on it, but I absolutely loved it. Yes, buy it instead of a laptop. Heck, you can even use it as a laptop. You can get the type cover or get an external keyboard, whatever you want. And you also get a tablet when you need it. Beyond the shadow of a doubt for you guys going to college, just want something that can do the best of both worlds and you like the PC side of things, I would absolutely unabashedly recommend the Surface Pro 3. It's a little more expensive than other sort of less expensive laptops. Obviously, it's less expensive, uh, but you do get what I consider to be the best of both worlds and the best Windows 8 experience that is available. For my money though, I would go for that mid-spec Surface Pro 3. I'd go for the i5 with 256 gigs of solid state and eight gigs of RAM. It'd be a really, really nice machine. Hopefully that helped answer your question. Next question comes from Twitter user at Gabby underscore BB who asks at John Four Lakers with all of the great flagships coming out this year, is it worth it to wait on the iPhone 6 or to go on Android? Hashtag ask to be. And the thing with phones is you can always wait for something new. With something like the iPhone 6 that you know is gonna be an annual release date, at least you can plan sort of accordingly when it's going to come out. The Android though, it's kind of a crapshoot. Uh, but just because the phones might have already been out doesn't mean they're bad phones. Heck, I have access to every phone out there and I'm happily using a Nexus 5. Really happily and I love the device. So newer doesn't always mean better. Uh, for my money. Uh, I would say though, if you're sort of thinking about going to the iPhone side of things, that you should definitely wait for. Uh, supposedly big differences from the iPhone 5S with the iPhone 6 is going to be. Android though, it's a little bit more fluid if you want to wait something maybe the next Nexus device that might be coming. Uh, you have great devices like the LG G3, which you gave the highest ranking of any phone you've ever reviewed to. You've got great devices already out at a pretty discounted price like the Nexus 5. 32 gig is about 400 bucks uh, off contract. It's a total steal. So ask yourself that question. You know, are you set on going iOS? If you want to go Android, I wouldn't even bother waiting. There's some awesome devices out, the S5, HTC M8, uh, you know, this guy and the G3 and a ton of others out there on pretty much every carrier. Hopefully that helped answer your question. Next question comes from at Red Sox 2009 asks at John for Lakers, how's the progress on the new office going at Techno Buffalo? Uh, last week we showed a few pictures of construction on our new Techno Buffalo office. We are going to be moving sometime in September or October. They are totally gutting this office space. It looked like a generic office space. We're gonna try and make it look a little newer, a little more modern. You're probably saying, John, why are you guys moving? Your space looks fine. Well, look, we've got a good problem. First, we're kind of outgrowing it. We're adding new staff members. It's a smaller office. We need more space and probably more pressing is our leases up. Uh, so we want to get something a little bit larger and what I think is the most awesome part of our new office, we're building out a full studio inside of the office. To so be able to dress kind of six different sets for different shows, so we don't have to keep looking at you know, the logo behind us in every video, be able to sort of mix it up and add new sets and be able to control all of our lighting too. Right now, we've got sort of natural light coming in from over there, natural light coming in from over there. Then we've got sort of our controlled light right in front of me. You guys can't see it, it's just sort of a lighting nightmare. Uh, so be able to sort of control all that stuff and hopefully it'll help make the YouTube videos look even better. We always want to sort of improve and, uh, you know, it's gonna be fun to have our own set anyway. So hopefully look for that come September, October, of course. We'll do a full office tour once we're all moved in, maybe even one before, you can see what it looks like before we move all of our stuff in. Uh, then once we're all sort of set up, we'll give you guys a full tour of the space. Hopefully it helped answer your question. Take a quick second to thank our friends at audible.com. You know them, you love them. They are the best place to get spoken word books. You've been needing to sound smart at cocktail parties and be like, oh yes, I also read Dostoevsky. Now you don't have to spend the time flipping through them stupid pages. You can just listen to the book when you're in your car, when you're at the gym at work, whatever it might be, go to audiblepodcast.com slash techno to get your free audiobook download of your choice. Again, that's audiblepodcast slash techno. Get your free audiobook when you sign up.
Next question comes from our friend Dave at Geekanoid, who asks, at John 4 Lakers, what is your opinion of the Patreon and YouTube tip jar? So if you don't know, Patreon is a site that lets you sort of give in monthly increments, sort of smaller amounts to, you know, really whatever you want. But YouTubers are using it to help generate funds to create videos, buy equipment, whatever it might be. And it's become pretty popular. And YouTube's jumped on ship as well. I'm uh, going to be offering something called a tip jar, which can give just tips. Uh, to your favorite YouTubers, not tips like you should shave your face looks gross, but tips like actually giving them money that you could give to a, a waiter uh, or waitress. So I don't know how I stand on this. So when I first heard of Patreon, it sort of seemed like people asking for money for me. Uh, but then sort of more and more YouTubers got on board and you started to see a trend happening. And the trend that's happening, people don't always realize, is a lot of YouTubers, you know, me included, uh, rely on ad revenue to sort of fund our livelihood and sort of in my case, uh, our business. More people are viewing these videos on mobile, which usually doesn't have advertising on it. If they do have ads, then they're usually lower CPMs. Uh, so the money has gone sort of way down by about 20 to 30% decrease, despite sort of audience viewership uh, kind of rising across the board. So think about if your job, you maybe lost 20 or 30% of your job, you know, what would you do? Uh, so a lot of people, they would leave their job and try and find a new one. Um, but in case of YouTube, you can't always do that. Sort of asking the audience to sort of give money. I, I don't know where I stand on it. I haven't done it. Um, I can see why people are doing it. Uh, I certainly understand why people would do it. I don't know, I just, I just haven't sort of, I haven't done it. We don't need to do it. I would only do it if I thought it was really necessary. We need to do something big. Um, I don't know. Uh, but the YouTube tip jar is something that's kind of cool. Essentially, if you like a video, you can sort of just give a quick donation, give a buck, give two bucks. Uh, you know, YouTube is free, always continues to be free. So it's a nice way to sort of give back a little bit. Uh, to the videos that you like. But, you know, I watch the videos too. I don't know if I would give money to YouTubers. Um, I really just go back and forth on this. I undulate, uh, if you will, on which side of the fence I'm on. But it's looking like this is gonna be more and more of a thing. Uh, you know, perhaps it becomes more mainstream or tools become available. You know, maybe it'll sort of sway me one direction or another. But what do you guys think about this, the Patreon and the YouTube tip show? I actually would really love to hear your thoughts on it. Leave it down below and I will make sure that I read them. Next question comes from is Mali Ali asked at John Four Lakers is charging your phone overnight damage the battery? That sir does not exist anymore. Not a problem. Uh, modern lithium mining technology, not an issue. Charge your battery all you want every night. Not going to have any sort of issue at all. In fact, you should charge your battery every night because you want to have a full charge. Uh, don't worry about decharging all the way, then charging all the way back up to calibrate. That really is not an issue anymore. Uh, it'll be totally fine no matter what you do with your battery. Just plug it and charge it when you need to. Uh, and don't worry, if you're gonna keep your phone for maybe like eight years, you might see some battery life degradation, uh, but really I would not sweat it at all. Hopefully that helped answer all of your questions, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I love these Ask the Buffalo questions. Keep them coming. If you wanna have a question feature in an upcoming episode, every Tuesday on technobuffalo.com, we put up a call for questions. Leave them in the comments down below. Otherwise, send it to me anytime. Uh, at John Four Lakers, just use hashtag Ask the Bees so I know that it's for Ask the Buffalo. Until next time, I am John Rettinger. Talk to you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. We'll be the first one to know whenever we upload new content. We've got new stuff coming every single day. We want to make sure you see what's new in the world of consumer electronics.